What's happening? Get the Virtual Gaming Hippie, and we are back to the future in my modern gaming world, where today I'm going to give you my take on a very unique game called Kuldeka. But first, this episode is going to be brought to you by the Hulkster and a little Sam Adams Logger. Kuldeka was released in 1999, and it wasn't a game that I had uh, heard of back then, played, or anything to that degree. I came across uh, this uh, series because it's the first one in the Shadow Hearts series, which you probably may be more familiar with. Um, but I came across Shadow Hearts Convent and Brave Brave New World around 2004 or five, and uh, you know was partially into my gaming collecting. Love those RPG games, and I went back and I went ahead and picked up Coldeca and Shadow Hearts so I could have the complete series. I didn't really play this that much uh, when I first got it. I kind of found it not to my liking. But when I decided to go back and start reviewing games and possibly downsizing my collection like I think I'm going to, I wanted to play games that I was caught on the fence about keeping or not. And this was one of them. Uh, it's actually a really good game, uh, very well done in a lot of aspects. Uh, it's a mixture of Resident Evil type of survival horror or Parasite Eve, if you ever played that one or the second one, and um, a Final Fantasy. It does the Resident Evil side really well. With the story, in my opinion, uh, the graphics, the voice acting is, you know, just 10 times better than anything those things did. Um, but where it kind of doesn't do very well is the, not the leveling so much. I like how you can bounce around your stats to level up. But it's the leveling of the weapons and the spells is kind of slow. Seems not really worth it as they seem to cap out at level 3 from what I've seen. And your weapons break. Not that that was a hindrance of you not having weapons to use. But, you know, when I have a really cool sword and I build it up, give me a chance to repair it and not just lose it. But they're really, really, really minor, just kind of small things that maybe when you're making your first role-playing game with innovative ideas, these are things you could kind of fix. Um, things that were not very good, the map that they have in it is mediocre at best. I will show you that um, when I show you some examples of the game. It will tell you where to go and you can definitely follow it. Um, it just isn't really clear on maybe where these stairs go up or down or right left what can you go through this door i mean you you can get through it okay uh so far i have not played all the way through this for this uh playthrough i have been using a game uh guide online on game spots uh guide throughs by a guy named Gobi. that has been a good enough walkthrough i mean as good enough as this game is going to tell you it's going to say go here do that you can kind of just play through the game yourself and figure out what to do for the most part without a guide i just kind of followed it for here or there to see if there's anything i missed because with it being really dark in the graphics um which are good graphics it's just it's dark and hard to see i didn't want to miss anything that might be kind of cool and i didn't want to spend 25 hours searching everywhere the game itself is relatively short if you were to stick through and just play it um, end to end, it'd probably be 12, 13 hours maybe. If that, I mean, if you really burn through it, you could probably burn through it in three or four hours or less if you just sat down and straight played through it. It is four discs, but that's because a lot of the cut scenes and stuff that are beautifully and well done probably take up the majority of that. This was 1999. This was the PlayStation. So you can kind of understand that. Um, I'll give you an example of some of the things, uh, what it looks like in the game, some of the things that are tricky about the game. And at the very end, I'll give you kind of my wrap up of the game and what I think it's worth. So with that said, we're gonna cut the lights and we're gonna see what a little bit of Kuldeka is about. You gotta play it in the dark. Now, first I'll show you the map. And if you listen, if you ask me, this sounds like Resident Evil sounds. I remember that same sound. So there's different floors. And you can kind of see that you can go uh, through doors that you have keys for by the colors. Obviously, stairs that go up and down. Check marks are things you've done. X's are things that you haven't. However, some of these stairs don't always lead to where you want them to. And there's a lot of backtracking done. The battles, however, are a little bit tedious in the length of them individually. And the music is repetitive because it's always the same. But I didn't feel like there was continuous battle after battle after battle. It was just enough to keep you nice and level to get you be, uh, strong enough for the next boss. The controls take a second to get used to, but once you get them down, they're a lot smoother than Resident Evil, especially Resident Evil on the 2 on Nintendo 64. It is a very dark game, although I don't find it grotesque in blood. But the storyline and some of the actions that take place is a very dark game. I'm just going to try to find a battle.
There are various save points throughout the game, which is that was one of them. Okay, now we get a battle scene. It's a chessboard type of idea, and I never really explored um, using that to your advantage or disadvantage. There was one battle where there were obstacles in the way that you had to navigate around, but I just found it kind of irrelevant since there was only one. First thing is I always move them up, and then this is my magic caster. Magic spells seem to cap out at three levels, and they kind of go up slowly. But they do the job. It can be kind of a crapshoot on which one works on what animal. Kuldeka I use mainly with guns, and much like real life, if you want to change out a weapon, reload your gun, anything like that in combat is going to take a move, which means you don't get to attack. But when you can just one-shot things like that, because my guys are pretty strong and this is a lower area, not a big deal. Graphics look not bad for the time. And you can level up, and you get four points to use at your leisure. You can build up their strength, their uh, hit points, their ability to hit, how quick they are, magic, your basic stuff there. And so I like how that's kind of innovative. And let me give you my final thoughts. It's a very unique game. I think Kuldeka is definitely something that... Uh, if you are either a PlayStation collector or a role-playing horror-based collector, it's something you should definitely have in your collection. Now, value, I would never pay anything more than $200 for a game, period. Consoles, maybe, but not games. Is Cool Deca worth $200? If I'm a collector and I want to have um, the PlayStation, all the games and stuff, or uh, a role-playing-based specific games like I like to do, then yes, I probably would pay 200 bucks for it. It's a fun game. It doesn't, I think, have a lot of replay value, but um, it's definitely worth, there's my big kitty tail. Macho man, keep your tail down. It's definitely worth um, having in your collection to keep because it's not something that's been released on any other uh, platforms other than PlayStation, Japanese, and PAL. And I don't believe it's been released on anything like your steams or I, I think this is the only way you can play it is if you have it on playstation so for that i would definitely get it but i would never pay anything more than 200 dollars for, for for any game for that matter so that's just my take but definitely a game if you played it back in the day and you got some nostalgia you're trying to pick up i think this will definitely give it to you you're gonna pick it up and you're gonna go wow i remember this game i remember the dark mood to it i remember the, when that happened i was surprised and i think you'll definitely dig it for that reason so kodeka definitely a good game it's worth a play this is Retro Gaming Hippie. Remember, I don't buy nostalgia because I am nostalgia.